Hi, welcome back. We're learning from Rousseau and uh, today we're going to be studying the flowers. Um, now I've taken um, time to study um, uh, Rousseau's flower forms and the one that I liked the most was this uh, very distinctive pattern uh, which is used to kind of frame the figures and create a kind of uh, dynamic between the uh, skyline and the middle, um, the foremost of the midground as it comes this way. You can see that there's um, a opposite distance coming here that separates out. So it creates um, an interesting composition. Um, Rousseau uses his flowers to frame the figure. And um, let's get started. We are going to go over to the demo class and with a little bit of help, a little moment, we'll see how the flower forms were added and what I learned. So, here we are. Let's refresh the page and begin. Apologies for the delay, but here we are. Okay, so, so far we have created the background sky, we've created a, a mid-ground of foliage and a more forward mid-ground which contains the sofa, the figures and um, uh, all the little animals that you see. Uh, so if you look up in the top right hand corner you can see uh, an image taken straight from Rousseau's The Dream from 1910. And you can see this uh, very distinct flower form that he has. And the one that interests me frames the female figure, then comes down over the sofa and then back up, um, kind of highlighting uh, or escorting the um, black figure and then down to the side. And again, it creates a, um, a kind of um, contrary motion between this, it and the skyline. Uh, so I studied the flowers and you can see there's a very distinctive shape to them. Starting from the top, you can see that there are four petals, then three and they are aligned vertically and slightly offset. Then we have um, two pairs of horizontal petals, um, which frame a kind of central dull yellow, um, you know, center of the flower. So uh, this is the one that I chose that I thought was quite interesting. I like the way that the flower form um, is highlighted so you can see um, light and mid tones and that helps separate the layer of four petals from the layer of three. Now Rousseau is painting on a very large scale so he's got a lot of space to make mistakes and a lot of space to move the brush head around and create this kind of um, grading, this kind of shading, this kind of gentle transition. I, however, am working slightly bigger than A4. And so I'm going to resort to my um, usual technique of uh, using Scrafito. If I get in trouble, I'll just separate the petals out that way. Uh, as you can see, I've loaded up uh, some titanium white. I've got some diox purple. 
and um, I have cerulean blue hue and I have a nice uh, magenta. But these were all mixed um, with a very large quantity of um, titanium white, although zinc white would be my preferred, but I don't have that yet, I'm saving up. Um, so I'm mixing up a very pastel blue colour. Uh, from the diox, I'm going to try and make up a kind of lilac colour. Because as you can see from Russo's originals, although you can see pink and blue bias in the top right hand corner, where the two flowers are highlighted for you above the main figure's head, uh, you can see a kind of blue lilac kind of bias, a kind of a pinkish bias. They are very desaturated. They're not high chroma at all. And so what I'm trying to do is um, uh, knock off some of the intensity. Titanium white is obviously going to uh, lighten the um, lighten the colour with its tinting strength. But also, and I've referred to this a few times in this uh, series, by allowing my water oil, uh, linseed oil mix to uh, dirty over time, that also has the effect of dampening down the colours. There, I'm bringing in a little bit of um, yellow ochre just to dirty it up, a little bit of burnt um, umber. And that is just to take the edge off the colour and do this idea of trying to knock back the colours a little bit. And of course, my medium is 50% water, 50% water mixable linseed oil at this stage to try and maintain the uh, fat over lean principle. So more oil on the upper surfaces, less oil below. Uh, now, bring in some diox uh, purple into the white to make a very uh, soft kind of lilac color. And again, you'll probably see something similar like, you know, trying to sully it a little bit by bringing in um, some of the diox mix from the medium and also trying to knock it back a tad with yellow ochre which is um, a, a complementary colour to the diox purple. It's in the range. So that should have a greying effect on it and knock it back ever so slightly. And then we do the same with the magenta. So I think my preference would be uh, to mix up my colours using a, a palette knife rather than a brush because that does create wear and tear on the brush. Um, but I've got my mixes ready and the palette that I'm using is just some greaseproof paper um, clamped down onto my board. And there's some yellow ochre. Trying to put some yellow ochre into the olive mix to dampen it down a little bit. And this, I believe, is to make the centre of the flowers. So I'm completely uncertain at the moment. Um, I could have taken more time to position them. Um, even more carefully, but I just went with what I felt. So I found the uh, flowers, the centre of the flowers, uh, by uh, putting in uh, the position of the flowers by locating the yellow centre of the flower. But I didn't want that yellow to be too strong, so a little tester here, just to check out. That might be a little bit too bright. Okay. And these are positioning the flowers. So there you notice I dropped the brush a little bit because I felt the the angle between the first and the second creates contrary motion with the skyline above it, if you look. 
Uh, the positioning of the third flower is because the area above that ocelot was dull. The positioning of the fourth was um, it wouldn't uh, conflict with the elephant and the human figure if I placed it there. And also it was an area that I felt was, you know, perhaps on the dull side, it needed it. And again, it's creating contrary motion with the sky. There's a little dot there above the female form's hand, which is located at one of the hot spots of the two thirds rule. And again, just some others uh, that I felt kind of resembled the um, the original painting that you can see at the top of the picture. I actually counted out the number of flowers and resolved on an odd number. And I actually can't now remember how many it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven at the moment with the potential to go up for uh, more. As you can see, there are some flowers that frame the female form. But my female figure is slightly more to the left. And so I don't have the space to play with. I went in with blue, the kind of very pale blue mix, and pressed hard and released as I uh, dragged away. So a lot of pressure and then releasing off to the tip of the brush and then lift. The opposite is true, I've got to go from light to heavy on the left hand side. There creating the horizontal uh, petals. Trying to maintain a kind of subtle distance uh, between them. If that gets lost, I can always just try a little bit more. So I got a lot of practice painting these flowers. And in reality, uh, I learned that if I was doing them again, um, I found it a little bit easier if I placed the uh, triangle central north of the middle of the flower, and then everything sort of sat quite nicely. But I had to learn that as I um, went along and got into a sort of workflow. Another thing is, um, I don't actually know at this moment how large these flowers are going to be in relation to the uh, the overall composition. So if you look at Rousseau's original, these flower heads are actually quite large. Um, and so I think that first one was uh, just, just about right. Uh, but this is another thing that I've learned about Rousseau is not only the placing of the objects in space, but also their relative sizes and also the intensity of the colour. Um, his said uh, is tonal control is excellent. And I actually admire him even more. Um, I was a fan before, but now that I've tried to paint in his style, uh, I can see that um, uh, how skillful an artist he was. So this first one in blue, a very, very pale pastel blue made from cerulean blue hue from the Windsor and Newton um, artisan water mixable oil range, has made a very pastel blue. And, if you pardon the really bad pun, it acts as the blueprint for all the other flowers that follow. So having never painted one of these before, I had to try it out, see how I got on. And there, uh, I'm fairly happy that the lightest value of the flower is placed. So if I want to go in and create shading, I can put in darks as a glaze. I can glaze over these later. If I, I take um, paint 
with um, a lot of um, uh, what's it called? Fast drying medium. Okay, next layer. So I've got a lot of space here above the ocelot to break up. And so I'm being very cautious to cross reference this one with the one that I've just done before. And I decided that I was going to work with blue and I was going to put all the kind of blue ones that I wanted in. Now, when I started this painting, uh, I was uh, quite happy with the sky. And then when I put the tall vertical uh, trees in, I became a little bit alarmed um, at how blue it was compared to all the greenery. But now that the figures are in place and the sloth and the human figures and the elephant, um, it kind of works better. And I was still wondering if the female figure could be just rendered in blue. And so I was actually favouring blue for this reason. I thought, you know, um, uh, bringing out the blue element in the um, tonal range uh, would suit having a blue figure on the couch. So we're going to be addressing the, the figure uh, in the next episode. Uh, but I went from not wanting to copy the white figure to wanting a black figure for um, uh, artistic reasons. I wanted to reverse the role between the uh, white person being um, entertained by the black person to flipping that right round, having a, a black person be the figure of authority and power. But that didn't quite work out because I realised that um, I would have to change the tonal balance between a dark figure and the dark sofa and uh, the balance just wouldn't be right. And so... Uh, I just stick, stuck with uh, Rousseau's uh, white figure. But more of that unknown. Right now, I've um, placed um, a petal on the row of three uh, above the yellow centre of the flower. So this was making it very easier, very much easier for me to position the row of three and the row of four. But if you look at Rousseau, he is more flexible with his, they, they kind of move around a little bit. I'm trying to be a little bit more mathematical and create a formula for painting flowers in the style of Rousseau, or painting this flower in the style of Rousseau. So, still just learning. Uh, but what I did notice is all my work on birds with layering the feathers, uh, this is very, very similar to layering feathers and um, uh, you know, filling the negative space in such a way that uh, one row doesn't impinge upon the next row. And so um, uh, I found that there was a kind of um, congruence between my experience of painting birds and trying to paint these petals in this way. I have since um, joined a Facebook group um, for, um, for lovers of botanical art because uh, I'm aware that I don't know my flowers very much uh, and I need to learn more about them and um, I want to enjoy painting them. So uh, the paint was a little bit tacky. It oxidises with the air so that's going to happen even as you're painting. The mix which you think was right uh, a moment ago will, you know, inevitably start drying out and change. So I introduced a little bit more of the water linseed oil mix 
just to help things flow a little bit better. And um, in the couple of months that I've been returning to painting since my um, uh, since the injury to my right hand, um, I've really learned this about uh, oil paints is trying to get the mix just right, getting it to flow off the brush the way that I like it, uh, and. Uh, learn to uh, observe the kind of fat over lean rule, I suppose, is the biggest problem uh, for me. So again, I'm approaching this third one with now a little bit more assurance. But this one is problematic because it's so close to the elephant that I want to enjoy the head and the rump of the elephant, which are just still visible. And I don't want the viewer to lose that information. Uh, and so I'm trying to position things fairly carefully. And I want to give the human element its own space as well. So uh, I was becoming a little bit more protective of the uh, you know, the details that had been introduced before. And I suppose this is another thing that I've learned about Rousseau, is that his uh, positioning and placing of uh, figures, and not just the human figures, but the other elements, the other uh, animal elements within his um, jungle of the mind, his psychological jungle, um, is very clever, is very measured. And yet the overall effect there's the first fl the first petal going directly over the center of the uh, the yellow center of the flower. Yeah, there is a precision to his uh, work, which I think is born out of multiple corrections because you know there is evidence in looking at his artwork that he painted in layers as I'm doing right now, and also moved things around and corrected them. And he's not the only artist that does that. That's very, very common. Um, but the positioning of uh, the items in space uh, works really, really well. I wish that my female figure was slightly closer in. Uh, and so I regret that about this painting. But I'm not regretting the... Um, the learning that I'm doing by challenging my uh, comfort zone. So there are two ways to approach a task, I suppose. One is to consolidate a strength. So you become a specialist uh, and you practice and practice uh, a particular skill and you rehearse it so much. And the other one is to challenge a weakness in other words, to test your comfort zone, test the boundaries of your experience. Uh, and by doing so, you become more of a generalist. So you learn to um, problem solve uh, different kind of artistic uh, problems. And at the back of my mind is uh, also this thing. Um, when I did my BA honours, I studied um, Nicholas Buriart, who said you can't, um, roughly, I'm paraphrasing, that you can't self-actualize as an artist by painting, uh, by copying other arts. And um, I'm not in agreement with that. So this painting is not deliberately to prove Buriart wrong, because I'm sure there's many instances in which what he says is right. Uh, all I'm doing is um, learning by copying, but adapting the copying in such a way that it is still my voice while I'm extending my artistic uh, repertoire. So, three blues. back into that blue, cerulean blue hue mixed in with titanium. 
and I feel that another blue is needed next to the female figure's head. Uh, partly because she needs to be framed. Um, and so by doing this, by creating this, you envelop the figure and you draw attention to it by doing so. But also, I'm not a big fan of that space uh, above the flower. It's, it's kind of difficult for me to read. And what I'm noticing while I'm looking at my version of uh, Rousseau, while I have his version above it, is how much darker his greens are. Uh, I mean, my jungle seems very, very dense, whereas his, I would say, seems very, very dark. And so I can do, uh, I can do stuff about that. I can go back in and work in with black and use it as a kind of black tipex to try and create form. Who knows? I may even, you know, actually do that. But I don't want to copy Rousseau. I want to learn uh, a little bit more about them. By doing so, I've become more interested in flowers. I've joined an online group which celebrates the beauty of uh, flowers and flower art. And also um, getting the therapeutic uh, value of doing this work. There is also a group on uh, art therapy and mental health on Facebook as well. So these are easy to find. You just search them, they're, they're there. Uh, and there are, you know, uploads that say, how art or the act of creativity um, influences the functioning of the brain and is a positive reward. And so for me, just um, being able to use the right hand again uh, quite as carefully as this um, is a reward, but also having the personal space and time to just concentrate on nothing else other than mark making and the flow of paint off the brush and the sensation of moving paint around on a surface and getting the mixes right and consistency is uh, good. On the downside is having to do all of this while narrating it. So uh, you know that I'm narrating post filming uh, because of a technical issue that I had with the particular um, Minicam camera that I'm using uh, for this image. So, uh, yeah, it would be nice to get completely lost in the art and not have the, um, the issue of uh, dubbing or editing. However, the benefit for me is, I suppose, being able to articulate my own art practice to anybody who asks. And also, uh, I do feel um, that um, that is enjoyable and uh, rewarding for me to share what I learn on my artistic journey. I do hope that uh, things that I do here inspire people to give it a go and also enjoy the um, uh, the benefits of um, you know trying to be creative or pursuing creative endeavors. So there is the row of three, and you can see that I started by planting, placing the central triangle and then that allows me to map out where the other four um, petals uh, can go above it. I'm also fairly happy at how consistent the flowers are because if you look at Rousseau's image at the top there, uh, you can see that they are roughly 
you know, they are fairly similar in size. So that creates a kind of plane, a visual plane that you look beyond or over. So I guess that's a kind of um, a way that he tries to uh, show linear perspective while having, you know, largely flattened uh, uh, paintings. Now, I feel like I already want to automatically correct that statement because you can see that the forms are rendered, but they are they are rounded, but in, in a kind of flat way. So nobody would believe that the, the female figure on the sofa is, you know, uh, an actual person. It's the idea of a person. And I suppose the whole jungle is Rousseau's idea of what, you know, a jungle is like. Um, from the early research that we did, uh, right at the start of this project, he never travelled to these places. He visited the local zoo. He got inspiration from the creatures that he saw there, and they made an appearance in his jungles. So they are jungles of the mind. Uh, and I refer to psychological jungles. So, I suppose if also if we look at the artwork as a, a psychological item, um, it does reflect the dense complexity of um, the human mind. So sometimes brains can be a little bit tangled. Here I think I'm going to end with a little bit more lilac mix. And what you can see is because I'm using very soft haired uh, brushes, it's quite hard to pick paint up from the um, the palette. So what I do is I scoop with an old brush and get it onto the metal ferrule of a different brush and I can pick up a little pea or a little pellet of paint and I can just steer it into the direction that I want. Uh, these are Sable Synthetic Blend uh, brushes and they're lovely to work with, but if I had bristle brushes I would be able to pick up the paint more successfully from the surface. Um, there is good durability on these paint brushes, uh, but they will suffer from wear and tear, uh, I suppose more frequently than if I used uh, you know, hog hair or Chung King uh, bristle. Uh, brushes. So, that might be a purchasing idea. So what I'm doing here is now sticking to the form but also doing it in such of a way that I respect, um, uh, for instance that anteater there, the Tamandua's uh, left claw is coming very very close to the petal. So I don't want to obfuscate or obscure any of the information that I've got there. Uh, so it really is a balancing act of you know trying to uh, position the objects so that all work on the space. So here the layer of four, I think, comes down a little bit too close to the layer of three. Now looking at, at it as an outsider looking in, I would say that I need to re, uh, re-establish the separation there by using Scrofito technique. But I painted this a couple of days ago and doing the voiceover a little bit later. Um, maybe it's something I'll go back and do. Okay, back into the lilac mix, back into the um, magenta and titanium white mix uh, because we want a little, slightly more pink uh, item. There. So again, trying to keep the colours pastel, trying to keep them very, very soft. Certainly softer than the snake on the bottom right hand corner, which is also the um, magenta mix. It's there because my Jack Russell 
terrier, Cookie, has a plastic snake which we fill up with food and uh, she spends a lot of time you know, um, problem solving how to get the food out of that snake. So while we have ant eaters and sloths and ocelots and different creatures for you know my wife and my children and myself, the snake was added uh, so that the dog wasn't left out. Okay, there's the row of three. Now the row of four. Not sure why I didn't use the colour from the ferrule. Ah, there we go. Picked up with the brush generally and then manoeuvring it right onto the tip so I can get a little bit of um, extra precision there. Now, in hindsight, that pink one being so close to the figure, well, I'm going to be introducing proper skin tones onto the male figure. Uh, but uh, there isn't really a problem between the pinkness of the flower and the human skin tones because it's such a pale pink. But I remember having that thought at that time, you know, is pink the right choice here? Um, okay. So now that the colours are in, and the colours are relative, they all change each other's values um, in relation to each other. I've decided to lighten all the centres of the... Um, of the flowers by creating a sort of Naples yellow, I think, out of yellow ochre and titanium white. Okay, so thank you for joining me on uh, this um, episode. I hope you found something that is of interest to you and is useful. And I hope um, that uh, it inspires creativity, uh, wherever you may be. So there is a bit more, but I think I will just uh, end it there for the live stream. Thank you for joining me. Hope to see you in the next one.